Well, it's time to get the mail. <sighs> so I'm not really sure there is a post Four by four post that goes in the ground. The ground's frozen, so I'm not going to be able to do anything with that. But it snapped off here, so I can't just put another piece of post in it and screw it all together. So this is pretty much shot. Plastic stuff outside when it's really, really cold it just doesn't end up working very well. So this has this mailbox has a plastic housing underneath it. And uh, I probably need to make something that looks a lot nicer, but with the ground being frozen, I can't really, well, I can't easily put a new post in the ground. So I'm just gonna make this work temporarily. And then hopefully I'll have time and the desire to build a whole new mailbox. Something that looks a little bit nicer. And is a little bit stronger. Now with this plastic being so cold and brittle, it might have just been the uh, the mailman or mail lady just opening up the lid and it just snapped. Or a snowplow might have barely just caught the edge of the mailbox and it snapped. Or just a bad driver driving way too fast, playing on their cell phone, probably listening to NPR might have hit it, clipped it with a mirror. But one of those Dodge guys that acts like he's always pulling a trailer and has his mirrors way out, but doesn't he actually own a trailer? He might have hit it with a mirror. This thing's in rough shape. Now, this will fit down in the plastic that's still there. I think I'm gonna make a mount for this mailbox and um, just slide that down in the plastic sleeve and see if it lasts. If it snaps off again, I can always put cleats on it. It's gonna look bad, but you know, that may only be needed for a month or so until everything's thawed out real nice. So I can put a screw in this and then set the mailbox on that. And then screw in from the sides because it's hard to get a drill inside to screw down through it. So we will see. I think that'll work. It's gonna be a little bit farther, maybe eight to 10 inches farther away from the road. So hopefully that'll keep it from getting hit if it actually did get hit. It's always handy to have a few different lengths of screws in stock in the barn or shop or garage. Very, very handy. Never know when you're going to need a few to fix something or build something in a hurry. That's why I don't like Phillips. Usually use Torx, but I've been trying to come up with little projects, well not come up with little projects, but use these Phillips screws on little projects that don't require to go in too far. Doesn't really look that bad. 
I mean, it looks bad, but not as bad as I thought it would. Probably need some longer screws to get there. side. Get a few screws to reach this other side. work for now. Look where the tractor was going through the snow. In some spots it kind of crushes it, but in other spots it's just sitting on top. I need to come up with a good way to remove ice. I don't know that the rear scraper blade will work very well, and I don't think a snow blower would work very well. Gosh, I haven't even talked about ever making a snow blower. I wonder if I could. Road's still a little icy, some spots. Wow, that's, that's a nice view. Except for the big pile of brush. All right, let's see if this fits. I don't think it does. I think we've got a solution. We'll just scab it together. Let's pick another gear. Snow blower, snow blower, snow blower. Wonder what it would take to make one. You've got, uh, you've got a lot of moving parts. I'm gonna have to YouTube and see if anybody's ever made a homemade, homemade, homemade snow blower DIY.
Just about pulled a Ben Kennedy there. Fell down. All right, I'll try to set you guys where you can see. About there. I hope you can see. It's uh, it's not pretty, but it can work in a pinch. Well, don't look at how ugly that is. Look at that nice winter scene. It make for a pretty good intro. Maybe. So the two logs that were here, a poplar of about, this is about two inches shy of 18 feet, and a walnut about the same length, they, uh, they were sold. Uh, my cousin Stanley took them off on his gooseneck trailer, pulled behind a Chevy truck. I don't know why that's important. Um, he took them off to a local sawmill and they paid, I think it was 150 for the walnut log. It was about the same diameter as the poplar and only gave $40 for the uh, poplar. So, 190 bucks, 200 bucks for two logs. I think that's probably more than I would get out of firewood, so pretty happy with that. And I didn't have to do any of the work, so hopefully Stanley will take his share out of transporting it, and whenever he has the time and the roads aren't slick, uh, he'll give me the, the check, so. I think that's a uh, mission successful. I was hoping for a little bit more, but expecting less. So a good day. Thanks for watching everybody. We do appreciate it. If you like the content, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you next time. Have fun.